assay we're going to do is the assay for starch, which is going to use a reagent called potassium iodide. Potassium iodide, when it reacts with starches like amylose, is going to turn a brown black color. So you can see it starts off as kind of a dark brown color, but it's going to turn a nice dark brown black color once it hits the starch such as amylose. You're probably wondering why do I have a cracker here? Well, I'm just going to show you what I'm talking about. I'm going to take a little bit of this potassium iodide. I'll just use the dropper of the bottle. and I'm going to drop it here onto this cracker and hopefully you'll be able to see that as it starts to hit the starch, it's going to turn black. It's going to take a couple seconds for that to happen but I'm going to add it. But now can you see how I'm adding it? It's going black. So this is a pretty good indication that there's obviously going to be starch in this cracker. It's also a pretty good indication that your potassium iodide is in all likelihood good and it works. Now for this assay, all we're going to do now is just add one mil of this potassium iodide to our controls, both positive and negative, and to our food juices. So we're going to do that. And then we'll see what happens. So into water. And that's again what we're going to compare it to. This is pretty dark, so hopefully we'll be able to see a difference. I'm going to add it and continue to let it react. It's a pretty instant reaction, so that's kind of nice. There's our controls, and we're going to keep going down the line to potato, apple, onion, milk, our peanut butter, and our three unknowns. And then we'll compare them up against the positive and the negatives. So our negative is going to be our water. Again, it has kind of a dark color to it, kind of a dark brown. And let's compare that now with glucose and sucrose, and I don't anticipate that those are going to look that much different, and they really don't. Um, they look pretty close to the negative control. Let's compare this now to starch and to egg whites, and look at the difference between starch and egg whites. Can you see the difference there? The starch has a nice brown black color, and our egg whites, again, look a lot like the negative control. So let's keep our uh, starch out. Let's keep it handy. Notice that it's nice and black, just like the cracker is. And let's compare things. We've got ourselves the potato. Well, that really doesn't look that positive to me, which is kind of unusual. You would think sort of that a potato would have a lot of starch in it, but not according to this test. Apple and onion, let's compare those. I'll hold them up against the white. You can see again, our starch is nice and black. Apple and onion, really not much going on there. Milk and peanut butter, definitely negative reactions. Take a look at those. You definitely see there's no difference there. And then let's compare these to the three unknowns. And again, not much happening here. There's our starch positive, and there are the unknowns, unknown one, two, and three. So really, again, when you look at that color, the starch is nice and brown black, our unknowns are not. So I would say basically the only thing that is positive in this reaction is going to be our um, starch. As all my labels fell off here. Okay, I'm gonna put my labels back on my tubes, clean up my tubes, and then we're gonna move on to the third assay in this laboratory. It's gonna be the Benedict's test for a reducing sugar.